In this video, I've got some practical follow along exercises that will increase your blender skills. This video is aimed at beginners, but there are tips and tricks for all levels. Check out my Get Good at Blender playlist link in the description for more challenges and tutorials and watch this space for more difficult chess pieces in the future. And if you like the style of learning with challenges and a methodical approach and are looking to learn Blender fast, then don't miss out on my beginner course bundle. Get three amazing courses still at the incredibly low price of $25 and become a pro in no time. Links in the description. So let's get started with the challenges. So here's the model I'd like you to create, a pawn chess piece. If you need a reference image, there's a link in the description. There's several ways of creating this. There's no right or wrong answer, but pause the video here and have a go at making it yourself and then restart the video and I'll show you what I believe the most optimal way is. So I'm in a new scene and I'm going to bring in a reference image so you can see the process. Here's the reference that I'm using, so I'll click and drag that in and I need to align it so it's along the x-axis, so I'll press Alt-G and Alt-R. That removes any rotation or grabbing movement. And I'll press R, X, 90 and press Enter to rotate it around the x-axis 90 degrees. I'll go to front view with one on my numpad. Remember you can use the Cartesian coordinates up here for that too. And I'll zoom in and line up the reference. So with the reference selected, G then said to move it up and I've left the grid on my reference so you can line up the grid nice and easily. You can hold down shift for smaller increments when moving as well to make it easier. And I'll line it up along the x-axis. It's a tiny bit out, but it doesn't make too much difference. Okay, so my reference image is in place and I can start building my object. Now, many of you might have started with a cylinder, lined it up with the base and then extruded the top and keep extruding out. And that's absolutely fine but I do believe there's a more optimal way with the screw modifier. In other programs, it's known as the lathe modifier. And for this, I need to start with a single vertex and trace the outline of my chess piece. To create a single vertex, it's quite easy. I'll just come around to the side here. You can select the default cube, for example, or any mesh, go into edit mode and select all the vertices with A. Do make sure you are in vertex mode up here though. Then I can go to the mesh menu and there's merge vertices there at center. Or I can just press M on my keyboard and then at center there. And you can see we've got one single vertex right in the middle of our scene, just there. So I'll go to front view again and zoom in and start extruding this point out and tracing around my chess piece. Again, make sure you are in vertex mode, otherwise you won't be able to select the vertex. And then I can press E to extrude and I'll constrain it to the X axis by tapping X and bring it out to here. Now to start off with, I'll just go to the extreme points. So E to extrude up to this point around here, E to extrude to here. And then I'll start beveling these vertices later on to create the curves. So all the way up, E to extrude up to here, E to extrude into here. I'll put an extra one in the middle. There's a slight curve to it there and up to the top here. Create one there and I can always bevel this later on to create the curve and all the way around. One there. And two at the top, it's always easiest with two. So one there and one there, and we'll line those up in a moment. But first, let's see what the screw modifier does. So I'll zoom out a bit, come around to the side here so you can see the results. Go to the modifiers tab down here, add modifier, and under generate, because we're generating mesh, we've got the screw modifier there. And you can see instantly, it creates sort of a chess piece. Now let's go through a few of the settings first and then modify our shape. The angle is 360, that means it's going all the way round. The next important settings would be the axis. The Z axis is the default, so it's the up and down axis that we're going around. So if you were doing something along the X axis, you would choose the X axis here. The next important attribute is the steps. So there's in the viewport and in the render, those are the amount of faces that it creates around your object. So this will have kind of 16 loops going around to make up this mesh. And it's the same in the viewport as it is in the render. You could of course have different numbers, less in your viewport for faster navigation and then more in the render for more detail. The last thing is the merge and the normals. I'll talk about those in a moment, but first let's check the normals by coming up to our overlays here. I'll click on the drop down and click on face orientation. So the normals are the way the faces are facing. These are all facing inwards, hence it's all red and we're seeing the back sides of the faces. I can easily change this if I click on the normals drop down here. There's an option of calculate order. If I click on that, that usually sorts it out. In this case it doesn't, which is an interesting one. So I'll deselect that and choose flip instead. And you can see it's flipped them all around and now it's all blue. So we know they're facing outwards. But just bear this in mind because we might need to come back to this later on. Let's start editing the shape slightly. So I'll go to front view, zoom in and choose my first vertex. And if I go up to the vertex menu, we've got bevel vertex there, the shortcut being 
Shift, Control, and B. So I use the shortcut, Control, Shift, B, and move my mouse to the side, and I can create two vertices like this. Now we can see that the red is back. So as I suspected, as soon as I start playing with this, I need the Calculate Order on instead of the flip. So I'm going to turn Flip off, Calculate Order on, and it works well this time. And like I say, usually clicking this one will point your normals in the right direction. So let's go back to front view. I'll zoom in a bit, select the next one, and Control Shift B to create two vertices. The closer together, the sharper the edge, the further apart, the softer. I can use the wheel of my mouse to create an extra point like so. That can create a smoother curve, and I think three points on the edge here will work well. And I'll left click. You don't need to make this too detailed because we will add a subdivision surface modifier later on. Onto the next one, Control Shift B, and I can use the wheel of my mouse the other way to decrease the points, and I'll just put two in here for now. This is what it's looking like so far. And I'll do the same throughout the shape. So Control Shift B, this one I can probably use three. You can select these points and move them into position if you feel it's necessary. Onto the next one, I'll use two here, and it's fairly sharp. This one, Control Shift B, and I'll make it much wider, something like this. Next point. Next point, we probably want a few here, maybe an extra two, something like this, I think. And G the next, move that out. I can scale these down. That looks about right. Just remember to reduce it back down to two for the next one. And for this one, probably need a few here. Yes, four looks good, and I'll bring those out and just adjust their position slightly. This one's in a nice even position for now, but I'll talk about the top a little bit later on. And this looks fairly okay, I'll just modify the shape very slightly. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's see what it looks like with a subdivision surface modifier on. I'll just bring my modifiers out a bit. I'll minimize the screw for now, add modifier and subdivision surface. So that smooths it out really nicely, and we've got a good looking shape. There seems to be some sort of anomaly at the bottom here, and I'm going to hide the reference image now, so hide the empty here, and we've got a little bit of a point at the top as well. In fact, I'll turn off the face orientation. You can see that a little bit easier. Under the screw modifier, if I click on the drop down there, there's a merge option, and you can see when I tick that, it merges those vertices together at the top there and makes it nice and smooth, and the same at the bottom here. You may get a little bit of distortion at the top there. I'll go to front view again, you can minimize that distortion by going to edit mode by having a point right next to it that's level with it. So how do I add a point in here? I hold down shift and select this one. And with both those selected, I can right click and subdivide. That gives me another point and I can move that right next to the other one like so. Back into object mode and you can see that's pretty smooth at the top there now. So hopefully you came up with something similar to this and hopefully you can see the advantages to using the screw method because it's very easy to go in and change the shape, which I'm going to challenge you to do now. So looking at this pawn, you can see there's an extra notch in this area here. So have a go at editing the shape so there's a tiny notch like this in the bottom section. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'm back to my original and we need to change the shape. If I go to front view with one on my numpad into edit mode, I can then insert the vertex into here and bevel it so there's a notch. I'll show you what that looks like. I can select this one and this one here, right click, subdivide, so I've got my extra vertex. Now I can slide it along the edge by tapping G twice or edge slide, moving it up to around about here, maybe a touch lower actually about there, control shift B, make sure I've got three cuts here, and then the middle one I can drag inwards like so. And we created that kind of notch like so. Okay, what I want you to do now is create an extra extrusion like this circular bit here, just underneath the bigger one at the top. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so back into front view, back into edit mode, and I want to create some sort of lump, like I say, in here. So I need to select that vertex there, that one there. It's difficult to see. You can always go to X-ray mode if you want to be able to see it. And then right click and once again, subdivide. Again, GG to edge slide. Control Shift B to bevel that vertex, and I've got three points there, and I can drag this one out. Now it's very sharp because there's only one point, so I might need to bevel this one again, like so, and maybe select these and just move them out slightly. I'll zoom in a touch, and I will go to X ray mode now so you can see the vertices. We might need to sharpen this point up as well, so Control Shift B, and I'll just have two there. And this one I can probably just move up to the other one and maybe move this in slightly. So we've got three points there, 
creating that sharp line in there. I'll turn off X-ray, zoom out and see what that looks like. That's fairly interesting, but I believe it needs a bit of modification. So G then Z for these, a little less sharp. So G then X to move those in. And I quite like the look of that extra little circular bit there. Now you may not like that extra bit, so your final challenge is to remove it. If you do like it, then you can always save your work now, but have a go at deleting that area. Okay, so once again, into edit mode, into front view, and I'll zoom in on that area. We can select vertices and press Control X to dissolve them. And that's a nice quick way of getting rid of vertices without deleting the mesh. If I select this one and just press delete, it deletes the faces. But Control X is dissolve vertices, edges or faces, depending on what you have selected. And then we've got our final pawn. The very last challenge then is to quickly add either a white or black material to this. Pause the video and have a go at that. And for that, I can jump across to the shading workspace. It already has a material, but we can rename this pawn white. Zoom in, we've got the base color of white. Obviously you'd change this to black if it were a black pawn. And then just bring the roughness down. I wouldn't say all the way, just close to the base just there. So I've got it 0 0.08 and that looks relatively good. Let's quickly go into object mode so we can see that more clearly. We've got a lovely white pawn just there. Let's just quickly see what that looks like with black. Again, I wouldn't go all the way to the black, somewhere around there, and that looks really great. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned something about the screw modifier. Let me know how you got on or if you have any questions in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.